Just to the 2013-14 school year um, that I'd like to discuss tonight and kind of begin that discussion um, on as we move forward here. And I, I think everybody knows the fact that school finances are not going in our direction. Um, and, and we know that as we look forward, we know that there's a storm coming. We've been fortunate enough to be able to avoid that for the last couple of years. Uh, our neighboring school districts around us have not been able to say that, where you have 15,000 furloughed teachers in the state of Pennsylvania. You have a pension crisis that we know exists. You have all these factors that are hitting us in different directions. And the way the North Hills has handled these situations have been able to handle it so that there's been a minimal impact on students, on academics, and on our programs. So if you look, the first slide I put up here is about my particular challenge. And I think everybody realizes that that is the challenge. My challenge as the superintendent is to preserve our quality educational programs and meet the challenge of school financing in an, area of de in an era of decreasing funding. I've been here 11 years. I'm extremely proud of what this district does and what we do, and I'm extremely honored to be the superintendent. At no time do I want to begin to look at the dismantling of our programs, particularly when we're facing school finances. So again, that's my challenge. Can we look at things differently? Can we do things differently? Can we reorganize so that we don't impact programs, so that we don't impact students in their education? So. So when you break down our budget, this is a simple breakdown. You have wages and benefits are at the top, debt service, which is the mortgage that's going to pay for the buildings, the renovations, and the projects that we've just completed, transportation, selected major items, and the remaining operational budgets. And when you break this down, if you look at the top, wages and benefits, those are our programs. Whenever we did the retirement incentive several years ago, I'm not sure if you realize that 31 teachers retired, we replaced eight. That's a significant number. That's a significant cut without harming programs, without having to cut anything or make any impact on what our students do. That's not going to be able to happen again. Um, we've taken the top of that seniority list, and they're no longer here. So to have another retirement incentive would not get us a number like we had in the past which means if we're going to impact wages or benefits, we're going to have to cut programs. And as the first slide says, that's the last thing that I ever wanted to in this district. We are doing tremendous things, K-12, day in, day out, and I don't want to begin to impact our programs based upon our financial situation. So I looked at some other things. I want to go back here. It, I'm going to focus on transportation, which I'm sure you may, you may know. So if you look at transportation, if we change the arrival and dismissal times of our students, if we look at something different than the way we've done it since 1992, is there a way that we can reduce the number of buses required to service our students and preserve educational programs? So that's the beginning of the discussion. If you look at that budget number from the previous slide, 4% of our budget is in there. It's $2.5 million to transport our students. This includes, the, this includes the 47 non-public school students and parochial school students that are out there that we, by law, are required to transport, and we do. We right now run 34 main buses, and that's the focus of what we're going to talk about tonight. For every bus is $46,000. So the flip side of that is if we do anything differently, for every bus that we can reduce from that number, the district will realize a $46,000 savings. So we began to discuss this with Mr. Hall, who is in charge of our transportation, and we began to look at can we do this? Are there ways that we can do this? What does it look like? How do we do it? And we began to, to kind of throw things back and forth across the table to the point where we are here tonight, that I'm able to show you something that is a series of discussions that the administrators have had in a can we make this work idea. When we get to the end here, the big question from tonight moving forward is should we? And that's what, uh, and I'll show you how we're going to have that discussion as we go forward. But right now, what you need to focus on is for every bus that we reduce, we save $46,400. So when you look at this, as we began to, to talk about this and think about different ways and reorganize things, these numbers started to become a reality. And Mr. Hall would come over to the office and say, if we can get to five, here's the number. I think we can get to five. We might be able to hit seven. If we cut real tight in this time structure, we might be able to get to nine. So we already know right now that if we do the reorganization piece that I'm about to show you on the next slide, that we are going to find between $230,000 and $417,000 in savings by simply manipulating time. And this is savings that's not a one-shot deal. It's not a, we decided not to buy textbooks next year. 
we're going to buy textbooks eventually if that's a decision that a district would make. We're not going to buy technology. These are strategies that other districts around us are using. It's a one-time deal. This is not a one-time deal. A move like this removes this amount of expense from our budget over time. So it's not a one-shot deal. It is a long-term issue. When we reorganize, the hilltop is the first slide. I'm proposing a 7.20 to 2 o'clock day at the high school, which is a 20-minute difference from now where they run a 7.40 to 2.45 day. We're able to capture the other 45 minutes by reducing the lunch time from 45 minutes to 30 minutes. Um, in that proposal, and I'll show you the bell schedule, there's a proposed four-minute passing time as opposed to a five-minute passing time. And there's the, those are the things that with the high school administration, and Mr. Kreider is still here, that we need to talk about. We need to work through. Is four minutes enough time? We run a four-minute passing time on two-hour delay. So on the days we have two-hour delays, we know, we, you know that you can get there. We have a four-minute warning bell before the five-minute passing time bell rings now. So those are the things that we need to investigate as we break down that schedule. But that's how we were able to capture the other 45 minutes. We reduced homeroom by 10 minutes as well. <coughs> Students would not report to a homeroom. They would report the first period that would be 10 minutes longer. Homeroom today is are you here? We can let the office know with the electronic uh, attendance system that we have that you're here in first period and you don't have to have all the ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, or 12th graders attend the same room to let you know that students are here. And that's 20 minutes. So that was how we captured the, those 45 minutes at the high school to get that to 2 o'clock. There's a lot of added benefits that we can talk about with the 2 o'clock dismissal also. Um, student athletes would virtually not miss a period because now they very rarely get out before 2 o'clock if we're going to send them to an away match. 2 o'clock is the end of the day. It allows us to create a middle school. Last year when we talked about the reconfiguration of the hilltop, when we moved the ninth graders over to the high school, we were desperately looking for a middle school concept. Seventh and eighth grade teaming for, for a transition from the K-6 environment to the 9 through 12 environment, and we know that the 7-8 middle school is the best way to do it. In that 7-8 middle school, one of the things that is very important to Mrs. Williams, our middle school principal, is an activity period. Activity period helps to connect students to the day, it helps connect students to the, to the education, to the school district, keeps them focused, allows us to do a lot of different things. Right now, we can't do it because the 7th and 8th grade schedule is handcuffed to the 9 through 12 schedule based upon the nature of this campus. If we split the times, you split the buildings, you break that chain, now you can create a middle school because it's not connected to the high school. And in no way do those two buildings need to function in the way that they do now, which again is how they've always functioned since 1992, which is the reason for it's difficult to create a middle school in the time frame that we have because the bells have to be coordinated between the two buildings because of the way they're shared. And that sharing goes away in this project. Now to make that work, there's a lot of logistics in the way the buses are being routed. So to make it work, we have to also split the elementary schedules and run two elementary schools on one schedule and two elementary schools on another schedule. And that's order, in order to service all the students with the busing. The new time proposed for Westview and High Cliff would be 8.30 to 3. Their current time now is 9 to 3.30. I'm asking them for a half hour earlier. And we go Ross and McIntyre, they'll go from 9.15 to 3.45. That's 15 minutes later. So we moved the high school 20 minutes earlier, the middle school kids are 10 minutes later, the Westview and Highcliff kids are a half hour earlier, Ross and McIntyre are 15 minutes later. And, that, and that, that allows us to realize the savings that I showed you in the slide above. To make this work, we're really looking between $230,000 and $417,000. So there's the proposal of the, of the time structure. I mentioned the hilltop in the schedule. We don't have to get into the details of this, but this is what the bell schedules look like. You can see they report at 7.20 to their first period class. There's a 10-minute homeroom with no passing time. They're already in their first period class. First period begins at 7.30. 41-minute classes. They're running 40-minute classes now. Four-minute passing time. So you can see, and I know we'd have to check in child accounting if we did move that minute back. Do we make the number of hours in child accounting? I'm pointing at, I'm pointing at Dr. Taylor because he knows that's going to be his deal tomorrow. So that's how this is made up. You see the 30-minute lunches, four, four lunches, not three, 30-minute lunches, 2 o'clock dismissal. 
the middle school schedule. You see how the day begins the same way. You report the first <laughs> period. You go through your schedule. There's 5A lunch, 5B class. That's going to be your 7th grade lunch. Your 6A class, your 6B lunch. That's going to be your 8th grade lunch. You're going to go 7, 8, 9, run a 9-period day just as we do now. The activity period happens at the end of the day. Now, we've already been out to, I know we've contacted South Fayette, and I know we're going to visit Upper St. Clair, two school districts that are doing some amazing things in this activity period. So that's going to be one of the focus as we move forward. If this plan is, uh, is adopted, that we'll begin to focus on what does that activity period look like, what are the activities that we're offering, what is that going to be for our kids. I've seen some very powerful things out of those two school districts that I just mentioned with their 7th and 8th grade programs. Now one of the added benefits that I, I, I want to make sure that we talk about tonight is hilltop safety. We've talked quite a bit about the gridlock that occurs on this campus in the morning and in the afternoon. And that's simply because of the number of buses and car traffic that we put on this campus in a very, very tight time schedule. This split allows us to service the high school at one time and the middle school at the other. And I'm going to walk away from the mic, but when you look at this, this is the entrance to the, to the junior high school right here. Every bus stops within this small area to let the junior high school students out, which creates gridlock the whole way down the, the uh, alleyway all the way to Rochester Road, simply because we're letting students off the bus. You also have student traffic, drivers coming into the student lot, which is located right here. Junior high school teachers park here, senior high school teachers park here. So there's no way to get to your parking lots, whether you're a student driver or one of the faculty members, without driving through this gridlock that's been created by the bus traffic. Now, the students know this, the drivers. So they try to get to this sidewalk on the first base side of the baseball field as quickly as possible, which means they walk into bus traffic and car traffic in a very dangerous situation and cross it two more times to get to the high school. This needs to change. I was the principal for five years. I couldn't figure out how to change it either. And I know that John, we've talked about this, Mr. Hall, we've had meetings like crazy with first student because we're concerned about this because of what we've created with that schedule that services 2,200 people at the same time. And the afternoon is no better because you have the buses waiting all the way down to this location for students to get onto the buses to leave. So it's the same thing. As high school students leave, they don't want to get into the traffic of junior high students leaving that building, so they walk down the street to get to their cars. It's very dangerous, and what this allows us to do is if we run a 27 bus plan, which is seven less than what we're running now, which is about $300,000 in savings, this bus loop in the afternoon stops right here at the crosswalk. So students have two crosswalks to get out and down the sidewalk to their cars. Remember, this, this building's not letting students out at that time, because they're in class. So that issue of getting away from this traffic is gone. When the middle school students put this miss, this parking lot is already clear, and those buses go from this speed bump to this speed bump to dismiss them. We broke the gridlock on the hilltop and created a much, much safer environment for our students by breaking apart the schedule like this. Because you're really talking about 25 buses as opposed to 34 buses, or 27 as opposed to 34. Now, as I said, in the morning, that first bus stop doesn't happen until right here. This is the front of the high school. There's no longer going to be that gridlock all the way down this road that's created by this stop at the entrance of the junior high school. So as we begin to look at doing it differently, this comes out also as a major benefit. So as I said, from the discussions that we've had, can we do it? Yes, we can do this. Now, the next part of this is should we do this? So what I want to do is we created a task force. The task force is made up of the PTA, PTSO leaderships, which represents a cross-section of the North Hill School District. And I meet with that group regularly, so we felt that that would be a good place to start this task force. In fact, it was their idea. So we'll start this task force. That's going to allow us to really continue this conversation and get more and more input as we begin to see what are the issues that result from a plan like this. As I said, we know we can do it. So the next question is, should we do it? Is that enough money to say, yes, we should do this? No, we shouldn't. And here's the reasons why we shouldn't. We're also going to have uh, Board of Education meetings are January 2nd, the 23rd and the 9th are the Education Committee meetings. 
and those meet from 9 to 10.30 in central office. We have school board meetings on January 7th and 21st and February 4th. And for the insanity, or for the sanity of Mr. Kreider, we're going to need to have a decision by February 18th because when you saw the bell schedules with the green highlights, there's a lot of work in the scheduling program that needs to take place if we do this. February 18th is scheduling season. So at that point, we either need to decide, yes, we're going to do this so we can begin to build the background of the scheduling program, or no, we're not going to do this. So that's why there's sort of a February 18th. We either need to approve, yes, we're going to do this, or no, we're not going to do this. So because of that, this task force is going to meet on a weekly basis. We're going to start next Wednesday, the 12th, and then the winter holiday gets in the way. So we're going to come back after the holiday, which is January 2nd, and every Wednesday there's a meeting from 9 to 10.30. And 10.30, we can go later if that's the case, all the way up through February 18th. So I encourage you to make your voices heard. These four nice people have agreed to accept um, questions, concerns, comments, did you think about this type situations for us to work through with our task force so that when we present this to the board, it can be, these were the questions, here's how we've resolved it, or these are the reasons why the presentation I gave tonight shouldn't happen, okay? Um, now what we're going to do also is, uh, Ms. Hartle has a frequently asked questions list that, that will go out tomorrow with this presentation. And um, they're on the table, even better. They'll be on the table with those email addresses as well. So the video of tonight's presentation will also be made available. So if you need to watch the presentation again or, or go through it, it'll be, it'll be readily available. It's not a decision that's already been made. They make the decision. It's, and we have not put it in front of them. This is the first time they've ever heard anything like this in this detail. They knew I was working on a plan about transportation. They knew I was looking at different start and end times, but didn't see it in that light. So please know this is the beginning of the discussion. And you know we will discuss it as it says on those dates as we move forward. And um, thank you.